Today's episode is with Zach Blair. Zach is a linebacker for the Cologne Centurions, one of their American imports on defense. This is Zach's third year in the ELF. He's played seasons in Stuttgart and Istanbul, and now this season in Cologne with the Centurions. We talked a little bit about the season, their first game against the Paris Musketeers, his and the team's goals for the season. So without further ado, a conversation with Zach Blair. We have got Zach Blair, linebacker, the Cologne Centurions. Zach, man, I was watching ELF football this weekend, and I watched your guys' game against Paris, and uh, I just watched you play. I was like, I got to talk to this guy this week. You were know, <laughs> you, just such a standout player, man, uh, really leading the defense. So we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. But I kind of want get to get to know you a little bit and, and let the audience get to know you a little bit. So can you kind of talk me through your football history? When did you start playing football? Walk me through high school, college, and how you ended up in Europe. <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, I grew up with four of the brothers. So uh, I was playing backyard football through, you know, three years old to five and then uh, started playing tackle. And then been playing tech football ever since I was five years old. I moved all over the United States, Arizona, Chicago, and Virginia. Ended up going to high school in Virginia. My parents moved back to Chicago my junior year of high school. I was like, you know, let me just stay in Virginia. So I stayed in Virginia with a buddy and then ended up getting a full ride to uh, UVA Wise. You know, coming out of high school, you know, when college recruiters come to you, they always say, you know, oh, well, you're not going to, you're, you're going to be red shirted guaranteed. And I've never sat out a year of football of my life. So I was like, I want to go somewhere I'm going to start, like, yeah. or at least have an opportunity. I don't want to walk in and then just be like, oh, yeah, you're going to be missing a year of football. Mm -hmm. So ended up going D2 and then started as a freshman. Four years later, um, I ended up uh, breaking the NCAA record for tackles for loss. So, so um, that. and then I think about two weeks after my senior season, I get a message from a coach in Italy and I'm 21 years old at the time. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll spend my spring semester in Italy mm -hmm. and going over to Italy. Like it was such a culture shock. I had no idea what I was expecting. Nobody in my city really spoke English. And, you know, that was like a, a big eye opening scenario for me. I ended up uh, finishing the year. I go back to college. I graduate. And then I get a full-time teaching job offer and I get an offer from uh, Poland. So I'm weighing my options. I'm like 22 years old. So I'm like, do I want to keep playing football or do I want to start a career? And I just ended up hopping on that plane, going to Poland and Poland was a blessing. So I ended up falling in love with going to Poland, spent three years there. And then after those three years, ended up uh, Stuttgart. So... <laughs> Man, that's uh, that's awesome to hear. There's a bunch of stuff in there. So wait, you said you grew up with four older brothers? Yeah. Dude, I grew up in a, in a family. I have four brothers as well, four younger brothers. So I'm the oldest. So uh. <laughs> big, uh, kind of big family like that as well. So I can relate. That's awesome. And uh, kind of awesome to hear that, you know, when you're at age 22, you're kind of starting a job, like you said. You're like, all right, am I going to start working in the real world or am I going to go play football again? And now you, you made that decision and – uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but it seems like it's probably the right decision based on how things are going for you right now, man. Um, man, abs absolutely. You know, every time I go back to the States and, you know, I end up, uh, I end up just picking up warehouse jobs. Cause yeah. I mean, I, I kind of like the labor work, but yeah. it's like, you know, going into a 40 hour work week, you know, just seeing all the depression and like unhappiness. I'm like, you guys don't understand. There's way more to life than a 40 hour work week. Yeah. And, man. Uh, I, I think I think I, I've grown up on this import adventure more than I ever could have in the States where it's like there is so much to learn about not only the world, but yourself like you. Absolutely. Yeah, you just get dropped off in cities and have to learn new people and, you know, the basic of languages. So it's like, you know, I, I'll never get caught in that 40 hour work week thought process. So, dude, I, I, I relate 100 percent. It's just and what you said right there is being. Do, living this import life, uh, it, it really helps you develop as a person in so many aspects. Like I was, I was looking at your Instagram, man, and seeing like you've obviously you've played all over, but you've also looks like you've gotten to travel quite a bit. And yeah. 
I mean, there's nothing that that opens your eyes and helps you grow and expand more than traveling. Do you have a favorite place that you've traveled to? <sighs> Man, um, I, I would say out of all the places, I think Finland. Really? Like Finland was just because I played in Vasa after my yeah. seasons in Poland. So I'd play my whole seasons in Poland. And then I'm like, you know what? I, I still got four more football to play. So if there's a if there's a football field anywhere in the world that's playing some football and my next contract will allow it, like I'm, I'm trying to play. So yeah. I've never missed a game for injury. And, you know, I've never left an import spot, like no matter the circumstances. So I, I honestly take a lot of pride within this import life yeah. and it's, it's exciting. Like you're representing your own country and, you know, your family. So I think it, it, it's pretty big to try your best and actually bring positivity to wherever you go. So 100%, man, I 100% I agree with that. It seems like that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. So you've had now you've played, this is your third year in the European league of football, right? You've had uh, you stops in Stuttgart, Istanbul and now in Cologne. Can you talk to me a little bit about these last three years of getting the, these opportunities to play in this new league? Man, it was such a fluke, um, the whole Stuttgart situation. Yeah. So I was playing in Poland and, you know, I was on a team and I was I was really believing we were going to make it to the championship. You know, it was obviously, you know, you never think about losing any games. And we lost a playoff game in the wild card, which was the first for me because it was the first time I'd never went to the championship in Poland yeah. on a Hail Mary fourth quarter pass. Damn. So we lose the game. Uh, I go home and I'm sitting there on the couch and I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to do with myself right there. I get a I get a message from an import linebacker on Stuttgart at the time. And he's like, yo, we need another defensive import. So. I just finished the whole season in Poland. And on that Monday, I get a flight booked for Wednesday and I'm next week. And I mind you in Poland, you know, you get like 300, 400 fans. Yeah. I go from playing in front of people's families to flying to Germany in Stuttgart. And that first game we had 4,000 fans and we won the game. And that was That's... the only win of the year, but yeah. it was like, I just was like, I never want to play in another league in Europe again. Unless mm -hmm. the league and ELF isn't being played. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. And we see kind of, you know, I've been out here for a while now and you're seeing how kind of special and how cool this European League of Football is and how many eyeballs there are and all the talent that's that's coming to the league. And it's just like it's so competitive. It's so exciting. You know, I don't play I'm a, anymore. I, I consider myself now a fan of the league and it's just really fun and exciting to check out all these teams, all these players in the league. Um, absolutely, man. I want to I want to talk a little bit about now this year with the Cologne Centurions. What, first of all, why, why did you decide to go to Cologne this year? Is there something in particular? Uh, honestly, uh, David Drain. Um, I, I played four times against Cologne, and I had heard nothing but just wonderful stories from the imports on their treatment, how – easy everything was accessible in cologne and they said the city was just amazing and i gotta be honest man it is it has lived up to the hype i absolutely love it here it was like when i got here a month ago i was like my first week i'm like i've i've moved every six months since i was 17 years old i was like i want to live in cologne now like i i actually fully intend on staying as long as i possibly can so that is so cool yeah cologne is such a cool city such good energy and it, man i i've I visited there a couple times and i absolutely love it so it's got to be awesome yeah. to be able to live there oh man i mean i mean the people and the fans too it's just it's one of the most welcoming cities i've ever went to you know i love my time in stuttgart and istanbul but it was like cologne just has a different aura and yeah. i mean the the team president as well as like the owner they're just so on top of everything Mm -hmm. For me, I just think to myself, like, I have no other option than to give everything I have, like, for this team. So it's like, yeah, man. and hey, I mean, from watching the game on Saturday, that's exactly what you're doing. I, I like, you know, I'm a, I'm a linebacker myself, so I'm a little biased towards, you know, guys like us that play, play <laughs> linebacker. But, um, yeah, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, that. Have you always been a linebacker, actually? I wanted to ask you that. Um yeah, yes and no. I mean, kind of yeah. just a defensive weapon. I, my, my freshman year of college, I played strong safety. And yeah. then 
week two of my sophomore year, they're like, can you play middle linebacker? And I was all state in high school at middle linebacker. I'm like, of course, yeah. but I've never been over 220 pounds. So, I mean, I, I'm actually quite light on the scale. I think I weighed in today at, you know, 210. So yeah. uh, I obviously have a different style than most linebackers. I'm not quite the hat and hands guy, but, you know, I, I just have a style that works for me. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, this is kind of, I don't know. I would describe almost like it as the new age linebacker is a little bit lighter, but rangy, athletic, high motor. And that's you're you're just all over the field. And uh, yeah, I was just super impressed by some of the plays. I, mean, you know, I, was, I appreciate I appreciate that a bunch, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've actually I've actually known about you for quite a few years. So I was like, you know, getting your oh, message. I was, I was pretty excited about that. So I just yeah, want to do appreciate the interview as well. So thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. So um Going into that game, um, I think that people maybe expected it to be not quite as competitive. If you look at some of the, you know, like power rankings and stuff that came out earlier, I I think that people expected it not to be such a competitive game. And people were surprised, uh, especially with your guys' defense, how well you guys performed and how well you guys played with you as – you know, one of the main staples of that defense. Is this something that you kind of, you know, you guys heard about and had in the back of your mind when playing? Like, hey, we've got a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. We want to show you guys what we're really about. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm actually, you know, I'm only 28, but I'm probably one of the oldest guys on the defense. Yeah. So, you know, going into the game, I, in my honest opinion, we have about four or five, you know, starters that if they were in America, they would easily be in college. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got to camp and I got to see these guys compete. And I'm like, guys, we are not a bad team. I said, if we actually lock in, block out all of the negative, you know, writings and critics and stuff, yeah, it, you can't have that thought process. And I said, and best case scenario, we actually have nothing to lose. So everybody already thinks we're going to be terrible. So what what does it mean to go out and just give it your absolute best? Right, man. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that's that's exactly what you guys did. And that, I think that kind of puts you guys on a lot of people's radar. Like, hey, you cannot write this team off. And, you know, I think a lot of people were, were you know, not to get too ahead, but a lot of people were a little bit wrong about uh, the the potential of the Cologne Centurions. Um, you guys are playing Prague this week, right? Yes, sir. At Prague. How cool, how cool is that, man? You're going to play a game in the Czech Republic in Prague. You know, it's my first game in the check, um, yeah. but I will say after last year, I was low-key blessed with Istanbul because every away game was a flight. Oh, yeah. So I know. never – I didn't ride one bus last year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, back to a 12-hour bus ride. Back to so, bus ride. You guys yeah. taking the bus to Prague? Yeah. I was, like, I was like, that was on my mind a little bit, but yeah. I, I am extremely, you know, excited about it. So I'm like, you know, Friday – gonna be a long bus ride i was like everybody needs a hydrate stretch just all the basics you you get in what you put out so or you put Absolutely. out what you get in so exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I did the same thing you know because i'm i'm working with the stuttgart surge and it's not as long as a bus ride to Prague, but we're going we're busing to paris uh this weekend as well and so you got you know it's just kind of part of it the, the the football in europe sometimes um what is and may, maybe this is tough to answer what what would this season have to look like for it to be a success for you personally and for the Cologne Centurions? You know, um, I, I would say, you know, bare minimum is winning record. Um, yeah. I think, I think the way that we were written off at the beginning of the year, I think that's motivated a lot of our guys to step up their game as much as possible. Um, I mean, for me, obviously it would be playoffs. Um, that, that would be, that'd be a huge shock, you know, uh, you know, having the team go three and nine last year and then everybody, you know, well, us losing a lot of, you know, players in the off season, um, was pretty significant, but, you know, I think, I think with all the young talent we have, I think it's, it's possible. And I think we can compete with anybody. Yeah. So, and that's always the, that's always the goal, you know, injuries happen and, you know, players get lost throughout the season. So. You can never actually make a guarantee and I'll never give anybody bulletin board material. But, you know, for us as a team, I think if we do our jobs, then we can compete with anybody. So. Absolutely. So, man. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and then going back a little bit to the linebacker stuff. What's 
what what is because you know you made plays all over the field last week, all different types of plays. Do you have a certain type of play when you're lining up and you see the ball snapped and you see movement and you're you're recognizing the type of play that you really like defending against, whether you know it's a screen or an outside stretch, something that you feel like, oh, I, I can read this and eat this up really quickly all the time. Do you have something that you like? I mean, honestly, I, I just I like Ken on the O lineman, where it's like any yeah. any small slight step, whether that's eye contact when they're looking to block down, whether you see a guard's foot six inches back than it was the play before. Yeah. Uh, as an American linebacker, and you know, someone who's been playing as long as I have, you got to be able to read that. So, I mean, I got to be honest. There's a little bit of my game that you know it's a gamble sometimes, where. Uh, and, you know, my coach, as always said, you know, I, I love playing for Coach Jay. He's incredible energy. You know, having an American D coordinator is a blessing within itself. You know, I just love that mindset. And, you know, he, he tells me, you know, if you're going to do something, just make the play. Because I will chew your ass out if you don't. But if you make the play, I'm just going to say, good job. You know, do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah. You know, if, if you're right, you're right. And if you yeah. make the play when you're technically doing something wrong, if you get in there and, you know, you know oh, make, yeah. the foul, make the play, you're right. Yeah. I, I always tell two linebackers, man, if a 300 pound man gets up and runs in a direction, there is a reason for that. Whether that is a <laughs> screen, a pulling guard or just an outside zone, there is a reason. So if that guy is going to do something, I promise you, you know, lineman. No offense to them, but usually they're not the uh, most active people. So if they're sprinting in a direction, the ball is probably going to go that way. <laughs> Absolutely, man. This is great advice. All young linebackers, write this down. This will help you <laughs> play all over the field. Zach Blair, man, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Like I said, super impressed with your play and super excited now to watch you all season and keep an eye on the Cologne Centurions and, and good okay. luck this week. Hey, man, I appreciate you so much for having me on and, uh, you know, looking forward to hearing from you and, uh, yeah, hopefully get in touch soon, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. All right, great. Thanks, Zach.